It's a fun little flyer. I like it, you know? That's why I've done so many uh, different videos of it in different places, because I'm enjoying this thing. <laughs> Enjoying the heck out of flying it. It's a blast. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. What I got for you today is a review of another of these little two channel RC aircraft, inexpensive RC aircraft. This one is the Trans Joy 6211. Now, this isn't from FX, the other FX 800 series. This is a different company entirely. Um, it is a biplane, as you can see here. It looks very similar, actually, to the FX-800 uh, biplane, but it does have a different design than the FX-800. FX-800 has uh, more or less straight wings. This one has uh, swept wings. They're, they're kind of swept backward. Um, hopefully, that will improve the flight of this. But again, as with the other FX um, series, um, this TransJoy runs about $20, $25 in that price range there. Uh, making it a very good inexpensive airplane. Now, in addition to being inexpensive, uh, the FX-800 series is very maneuverable little airplanes. And I'm hoping that this uh, TransJoy will just be as maneuverable as the FX-800 series. Um, one thing about this little airplane, this little biplane, and this might be true for the FX-808, I don't know yet, is that um, the other FX series all are pretty much... Um, you, there's not much you need to do to tune the aircraft to, to have it fly straight. They fly straight great out of the box. This one here, you need to do a little bit of gliding, um, particularly maybe in your living room or out here in the open in a grassy field, to adjust the back uh, tail boom of the of the airplane. In other words, if the aircraft, airplane tends to pitch downward, you got to bend up this tail boom a little with the, to bend up the elevator uh, to bring it to level off the airplane. And if the airplane pitches upward and stalls, you gotta bend the uh, tail boom downward to uh, level it off. I did that at home before we came out here, and I wanna verify that I do got smooth gliding out of this airplane before I actually fly it uh, under power. So what we're gonna do right now is just do a little quick glide and see how it performs, how it glides. And the wind's coming from that direction, so we're gonna glide it in that direction. Yeah, let's try it one more time. <laughs> A little more gentler push. But yeah, that's a good glide. I'll show you one more time how that's gliding. Try it one more time. So in effect, we should be good to go. Now, one thing I want to tell you or show you about the transmitter. Let's go over the transmitter real quick. The transmitter is similar to the FX800 series transmitter where this is your throttle and this is your uh, rudder and you can adjust the rudder trim by pressing right or left on this trim button here and you have an on off switch but if you notice it's missing the usb charger port that the fx 800 series has and that's because you don't need the fx 800 uh, charging port uh usb charging port it has its own built-in charger in addition to the the wall chart or the usb charger that comes with this uh airplane so you can recharge this airplane in the field with this charger by simply plugging in this little cable into the charging port of the aircraft so that it'll keep you flying all day long if you want um, this uses six double a batteries inside it uh, to power that charger <laughs> so that should be pretty cool and i'm going to try to demonstrate that after this flight when the battery runs out i am going to recharge it here in the field for about 10 minutes while i fly another quadcopter out here in the uh where are we at today? We're in Mirror Lake today. Notice those clouds off in the distance. We've got a storm coming here, and Mirror Lake is about to become another lake again. And I won't be able to fly here for about a month, so that's why I'm taking advantage of it today. So let's go for a flight of the TransJoy 6211. i got to remember that number. The Flight Show, as it says there. Flight Show, Spiral 200. Now you got a little on-off switch that you got to turn on. Yeah, turning on that switch with two hands. And I'm putting it on the ground, binding it to the transmitter. It automatically binds. You don't have to move the stick up and down. Now the wind is coming from that direction there. So get ready, folks. Here we go. First flight of the TransJoy.
It likes to go nose up. Look at that. <laughs> Going into the wind. There's a glide. Let's see. I turn off the throttle. Let's see how it glides. Yeah. That is too much nose up. I'm going to land it. It doesn't want to come back to me because of that. And what I'm going to do, folks, is put it pitched on that nose. Hold on, folks. Breeze is picking up here again, a little bit here. But again, you notice that thing, it was flying uh, too much nose up pitch. So what I'm going to do to correct that is bend down the tail boom a little to see if that helps correct the issue. Just like that. And the wind is again is picking up in my face here. So let's try it. I still don't like it. Let's let's bring it down again. We're gonna land it for a second here, folks, and bend it down a little bit more. What I want to do is try to get it to do level flight. That's too much uh, nose up pitch. So we're gonna bend it down a little bit more. Okay, folks, I'm going to have to fix that. We'll be back uh, later on with a another flight of this airplane. I think I could just tape that in place, actually. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this part of the flight. We'll continue on later. Okay, folks, we're back. Uh, it's about an hour later. Um, I'm at a different flight spot uh, because I had to go home and fix that. And how I fixed it, it was very simple. Just a piece of cellophane tape around the boom. Worked very well. But I am not going to be doing any more of the adjustments. Actually, that's how the instructions read is to bend it. And this is not bendable. However, uh, I was thinking about this. And the way that was flying, I believe this aircraft is mainly intended for indoor flight, say inside of a gym for indoor flying. But, you know, I, I like to fly outdoors. And so the way I've modified it a bit is added some weight onto the nose of the airplane to... Um, give me a little more, uh, move that center of gravity a little bit more forward uh, so that we can possibly fly outdoors. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to verify that this actually helps some by doing a little hand toss to make sure it glides properly. And then we're going to try to fly it again. All I did was put some uh, mounting putty for, you know, poster mounting putty that you put on your walls. Just put a little bit on the front of that. It sticks to it very well. And it seems to glide very well. So <laughs> relatively well. Let's see if that improves the flight of the little TransJoy. So, turning on the airplane. You know, indoor flying, that's not what I do. <laughs> but there are people back east who are suffering through the winter months that may find interest in this, particularly those who fly indoors in local gyms, gymnasiums. Okay, let's bind it. It's bound. Let's see if that mounting putty helps its flight any. And here we go. Cross your fingers, folks. And the wind's coming from that direction about three knots, I'm feeling it. And yes, it seems to fly much better now. So if you want to fly outdoors, you're going to put, need to put some uh, weight on the nose of that. Let's see how this performs in doing loops and things like that. Uh, I don't know about doing loops with this. Try the other way around. It's not a looper. But it is a very easy flyer. I mean, it's hard to mess this one up. But you can't fly outdoors. I proved it. But you need to weigh down the uh, nose. Quadcopter 101 here. I'm going to do one more flight of a little TransJoy here. There's one thing I want to show you. What this can do, what the other FX series that I've flown so far cannot do, and that's the turning radius of this thing. Um, in effect, you can really fly this in very small areas as compared to the other airplanes. Let me turn on the transmitter, and today I put on the little tassel that comes with this to show the wind direction. <laughs> I didn't do that in the previous flights, but I got it on here today. 
but this has an extreme turning radius for this little quad or little airplane that lets you do in effect figure eights I'm bringing it in closer cutting back on the throttle a bit too but you can fly this in very small areas very tiny areas even your backyard probably or in a small gym it's a fun little flyer I like it you know that's why I've done so many uh, different videos of it in different places because I'm enjoying this thing <laughs> I'm enjoying the heck out of flying it it's a blast you know it's it flies a little squirrely because it's it's made to be a maneuverable, a turner. It turns. It can turn on a dime as you can see here. I'm just going right and left on the stick, folks. Got back on the throttle a bit to bring it down a bit. But I like it. So I just wanted to show you that, demonstrate the, let's do figure eights with it. <laughs> it sounds weird too. I like the sound of its weird motors. I'm going to fishtail into this direction, right, left, right. See, the other FX series couldn't do this. Can't turn like that. This one can turn on really tiny turning radius. So, that's all I wanted to show. I like it. Trans Joy. Biplane. Fun little airplane. Hope you enjoyed this flight. Quadcopter 101. Side of God. Hope you enjoyed it. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with another review of the TransJoy 6211 um, RC two-channel RC aircraft. Uh, in my previous flight, I showed uh, that this actually flies relatively well in small small areas, but I'm flying in a big area today. We're at Mirror Lake, and it actually is a lake today. Uh, but in my previous video, I had a problem charging it, and I after going through the directions, I found out that to charge this airplane with the built-in charger you have to turn on the transmitter and then you look at uh, this red light here and it tells you when it's charged <laughs> that's your indicator uh, for during the charging I guess the light goes either off or on during the charge when it's fully charged so we're gonna fly this again for I'm gonna fly it until the battery dies in this we'll start out with that and then I'm gonna charge it for about uh, 10 minutes and then we're gonna try to fly it again after that so I hope you enjoy this flight so turning on the airplane with its on-off switch. Turning on the transmitter. Transmitter is bound. Let's go for a flight. It is a fun little airplane though, folks. There's no wind today, so I can actually have fun with this today. Just lofting around in the air. See if I bring it overhead. On a windless day, and it's, you don't need a large area for this airplane either. I'm flying it here in Mirror Lake. That's ridiculous, actually, <laughs> to be flying it here in this big lake, cutting down the throttle. But uh, you can fly this in small areas. Doesn't need a big area like this. Cutting back the throttle a bit. Letting it glide, actually. This is how it glides. I'm wondering if it'll take off. No, it won't take off by itself. We'll fly this until the battery's dead. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna, I am going to turn off my camera here in a bit because I want to save battery power for the real flight, which will be after this. When this battery dies, how long does it take to charge it? And how well does it fly 
after being charged with the charger on this charger. So I'm going to turn off the camera now. Actually, let's bring it in for a landing here. Cutting off the throttle. Let's see how well it glides too. That's how it glides. Okay, I'm going to turn off the camera and fly this until the battery dies, and then I'll start up the camera again. Maybe it, maybe it could use just a little bit more body putty, or not body putty. <laughs> That's how I repaired my old Fords. Uh, but it could use a little more mounting putty on the front <laughs> to smooth it out a little bit more. When you get these fugoid oscillations, folks, usually you're tail heavy there, and you can fix that by uh, either you can trim your elevators. You put your elevators down a little bit, but I can't do that with this because the tail will break, or put a little weight on the front, and that smooths it out as you see here. Okay, I'm going to full. I was hoping I could get it to do a stunt, but that ain't gonna happen. This is not a stunt flyer, folks. This is a beginner's airplane. Beginner's indoor or small area airplane. Uh, although it supposedly has range out to 100 meters, let's see that. We'll send it out this way. Not over the water here, <laughs> but over there in case something happens. Let's see what kind of range we can get. We'll send it out that way. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. We're about 60 meters, 70 meters, 80 meters. So maybe you're right. Yeah, about 100 meters. Let's bring it back here, folks. Still climbing, reducing throttle. Gliding it in, gliding it back. Yeah, it was about 80 meters out there. I don't want to fly it all the way out there because I don't want to go walking looking for it. Turn the throttle back on again. Reduce the throttle a bit. Try to smooth out those oscillations. That's another thing you can do to reduce the oscillations, reduce the throttle. Here, I cut off the throttle entirely. See how, just like the FX800 series, if you get into trouble, just cut off that throttle and let go of the sticks. I'm climbing a bit. Watch, I'll demonstrate that. Let's get into trouble. We'll give it a hard rudder. Let go of the throttle, shut down the throttle, let go of the sticks and see. It smooths into a nice, um, what do you call it, glide. And it climbs very easily. I'll just give it full throttle and it goes right up into the air. <laughs> nice little biplane. Beginner's biplane. Very easy flyer, except on windy days. If you've got a windless day, this is the, take it outside, you can fly it anywhere. Okay, apparently that's the battery. Okay, we'll get a chance to try the recharging. We'll see how long, I'll give it about 10 minutes to charge. In the meantime, I'll take a little walk around the lake here. And we'll hopefully, we'll be right back. Okay, to charge this, you have to turn off the airplane turn on the transmitter and then plug in the charging port. So airplane off, transmitter on, you'll, you'll see that you'll get a red light here indicating charging. Supposedly that light's supposed to go off, I believe, once the charge is completed. So I'm gonna let it sit here for about 10 minutes. I'm not probably gonna, I'm not gonna fill it up till all it's fully charged, but we'll give it a 10 minute charge and see how it does. So let's come back in about 10 minutes and fly it. Okay, where is that airplane switch? There it is, turning on the airplane. Turning on the transmitter. Let's see if we have sufficient power to fly after 10 minutes of charging. Hope it does. Yeah. Well, there you go. So that's pretty cool. You can charge this out in the field and keep on flying until the batteries on your transmitter die out. Or bring extra AA batteries.
Eyes great. Do some throttle. So pretty cool, huh? Rechargeable airplane. Keeps you going in the field. Just charge it for about 10 minutes, or if you can, you can do it for 20 minutes and gives you another full charge, supposedly. But 10 minutes is fine to keep you in air. Nice little airplane. Beautiful day to be flying too out here in the desert. About 75 degrees, folks. And I'm wearing a sweater and I'm sweating. <laughs> it was chilly this morning, but now it's not so chilly. Ha, ha, ha.